Hello and welcome to the presentation on the standards around COTS payments. I'll be talking particularly about the PCI standards for SPOC and CPOC that talk about the acceptance of customer pins and customer card data on commercial off-the-shelf devices or essentially mobile phones and tablets. Things have changed over time in the POS arena. We've moved from essentially pin entry devices, the device that was literally just there for the purposes of accepting your pin and perhaps accepting your card data as well. They were very simple. They had a small code base. They didn't support additional applications. They didn't really do a lot of things except accepting pins and cards. We've changed over time to something that is quite different something that is large and complex. It has multi-application support. It has multiple protocols that it can support. It might have Wi-Fi or Ethernet or Bluetooth or any sorts of things. Um, and it also has a very large operating system generally. It might be running Android or perhaps uh, Linux on top of which all of the payment functionality is built. And so this has led to an increase in the complexity of these payment systems, these payment devices over time, because customers are demanding more, the customers who use their cards, and the customers who use these products as merchants. And that's led to the next step in the evolution of these systems, which is taking the hardware away and leaving simply the application, the software that can be installed on a commercial off the shelf system to enable a POS acceptance device. So here we see what this might look like in a SPOC situation. So SPOC is software pin on COTS. So this is where you have the ability to take a traditional pin pad system and convert that or implement that if you like using a mobile phone with an application on it, a SCRP, which is a secure card reader pin, an external device that is used to accept the card and a back-end monitoring and attestation system as well that is used to determine whether that solution that you're implementing is still secure to deploy keys to that solution and so forth. The separation between the application on your COTS device and the card reader that accepts your card data is deliberate. That means that at no time is the card data and the PIN present within that one system in terms of the COTS system, the, the mobile phone, if you like. And that's to protect against fraud. Somebody might, think, for example, compromise the system, but all they'd get would be a four digit PIN that they wouldn't be able to correlate, to match up to any other particular card data. So it would be of little value. So in terms of CPOC then, what we have is a similar solution, but we no longer have that SCRP. We don't have that external approved PTS device that's being used to accept the card data. We're accepting the card data directly onto the COT system. However, in this situation, what we don't have is the ability to accept PIN, at least in the current version of the standard. So we still have the back-end monitoring and attestation solution. We still have the application that sits on top of the payment system in terms of the COTS device here as an application. However, we don't have the ability to read physical contact EMV cards. It can only be contactless because that's the only interface that exists on these systems. We don't have the ability to accept a PIN. There is expected and PCI have indicated that they will be making a change to merge these two standards to bring them together so that we will have the ability to accept contactless cards and enter pins on the one contactless device on the one COTS device that's probably expected sometime towards the end of next year 2021 not possible at the moment through PCI, it is possible through some of the independent card brands who have their own standards around this. But it's still very important that we maintain the security of that environment. We maintain the security of the application. And this is where some of the complexity comes into the assessment of these systems. 
So here we look at how we might scope an APK or uh, an application, if you like, for example, on an Android system, because at the moment Android is the only system where you can independently deploy this sort of solution. And we can see that there is a lot of complexity. We might have applications that are not the payment application illustrated here in the brown that might be doing something suspicious, might be trying to read sensitive payment data, such as your card data or your PIN. They might be trying to interfere with the attestation process that's going on. You have the target application in the pink box that is then built up of general application code, security code and payment code. We need to ask, is this developed with payment best practices in terms of your software development lifecycle? Does it have tamper detection implemented and obfuscation through additional software libraries and the process with which it's being built? Can it be easily lifted and removed and therefore attacked in a perhaps virtualized environment? What sort of permissions does it have? Does it have too many permissions and that might lead to perhaps insecurities? Are there problems with the way that application is built up? How are the cryptographic keys built? All of these questions need to be asked and many more about that application. Where is the data being stored? How is the file system being implemented? What about the Android platform itself? How is that being used? Does it have the right level of security? What kind of APIs are being used? When you build an application, you might target a specific set of APIs that perhaps is older than the platform itself, and that carries with it some security issues. And then there's hardware features of the device that are relied upon by the application. Perhaps it relies on an Android key store. Perhaps it relies on a physical security chip that interfaces to the NFC. Do these things exist? How does the application check that they exist? These are all the things that we need to check. But it's not just about the application either. If we move on to the next slide, we can see that indeed it involves items in the back end as well. We talked about that attestation and monitoring solution. We need to understand as assessors and the brands or PCI need to understand as approvers how that works. What is it checking within that COTS environment and how does it check that? Perhaps it is looking at a fleet of different devices. There might be perhaps 100,000 different phones that are being used and some certain percentage of them are a particular type of phone. Are they all the same? Is there one that looks different from all of the others? And if it does, why is it different? Is that because somebody has just installed a brand new software update and they're the first person to have that? That's okay. Or maybe it's because they're trying to attack that application or that phone. This is what the attestation system needs to look for. It needs to look for these differences in the fielded systems. We also need to make sure how it's managing, keeping itself updated. Obviously, mobile phones come out all the time. You have new operating systems coming out all the time. How does the attestation system keep on top of making sure it understands the new changes that are going on in these landscapes? Then the service provider themselves, how are they being maintained? Do they have a fraud monitoring system? Do they have the ability to interface through to the attestation system? How is that deployed? How are the staff being trained? How are the pins handled at the back end? And how is the merchant being enrolled, for example? Or in fact, how is the merchant being decommissioned when the attestation system determines that their mobile phone, their COTS device is too old perhaps, or has some vulnerabilities. We can see that it's not all bad news because mobile operating systems are in fact becoming more secure over time. They're implementing better security features. They're implementing better security management. And they're implementing not only at the operating system level, but with each new version at the hardware level as well, new features that really help to secure these platforms. And I'm very confident in saying that a brand new mobile phone that is fully patched is one of the most secure commercial systems that you can buy today on the market. They're really quite very good. So we don't necessarily need to be very concerned about the security in day one. 
but we do need to be concerned about the security over time. And we also do need to be concerned about the fact that mobile phones are generally built as personal use devices, not as devices that should or are used as commercial systems for accepting payments. And so the threat models are a little bit different as well. We can see that those threat models in terms of the attack classes, there's unauthorized applications that might exist that might try to be modified or spoofed and so forth. Does the solution provider have full control over the applications? What about monitoring of communications? Is there some way that an attacker can do that through another application or with access to the platform? Now here is where if you have modern cryptography being implemented, that really helps. But there's also platform modification. Can an attacker change the way the platform works by perhaps routing it or jailbreaking it, installing their own operating system hooks to read the data as it's being processed before it's encrypted? You might have that really good cryptography in there, but if the attacker can read the pins as they're being entered into the keyboard or perhaps read the card data through the NFC interface, then there's definitely a concern there. There's also challenges around obfuscation. Here is where it's a requirement that you package your application in a way so it's difficult to be reverse engineered. It has that tamper resistance features in the software. However, there is also a problem that the Play Store, Store in Apple's context, these stores are increasingly saying, we do not want you to heavily obfuscate your applications because that creates problems for our malware checking, the store's malware checking. And so there's a bit of a friction between the increased security on the app side and the privacy controls that are being implemented at the store and operating system side. We can see that even more. These privacy controls that are being implemented in each and every version of operating system are really in somewhat at odds to the requirements for attestation because they have station controls. You want to be able to uniquely identify a application, a phone. You want to be able to identify information about the other applications that are on that phone, but that's not very good from a privacy point of view. So there's a friction there that really needs to be at least resolved over time. On the next slide, we see that there are some operational challenges as well. With these systems, these mobile phones, they're not primarily designed for payments acceptance. And a payments device is very rigidly tested, very stringently tested around how much operating volume it has, how far it can read a card. We've done testings on cards with mobile devices. And those tests that we found indicate on this next slide that they're not as good as a traditional POS device because they're not tested to the same standard. They're not designed for payments. Now, they're getting better and there's some standards that are being developed that might involve making and making sure that these systems are better. But at the moment, certainly a mobile phone cards as well as your traditional POS system. The summary is that there's a lot of good things in COTS payments. Mobile operating systems are definitely getting more secure. We have better security features in the hardware as well. We have the ability to find ways to, to utilize those security controls so that the application vendors don't have to build as much themselves. The NFC readers are getting better as well. But the challenges are there in, as well. The increased sandboxing, the changes in the operating system around a privacy point of view are causing issues. There's certainly the risk that applications aren't able to do as much in terms of attestation and the back end. And in fact, it's more difficult to validate these systems, these phones independently. And there's a lot of operating systems features that are designed from a point of view of the user being in control of this device totally as opposed to a merchant environment that are a challenge as well. So I think with this thank you slide, I'll end here. But ultimately, I think there's a lot of really good things that are happening in COTS payments. 
but the challenges are there and I would strongly recommend you think about how you're going to implement these solutions in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.